Good day, class. It is an honor for me to share to you our new lesson for this week. But before anything else, let's have a short review of our lesson last week. So, ano yung ating dinalakay noong nakaraang linggo, kung inyong naalala? So, last week, we have discussed about the rules of debit and credit. And what are those rules? So, generally, yung, in summary, yung mga assets ay normally nasa debit side. Yung normal balance nila. And then, yung liabilities and equity, normally, sila ay nasa credit side. So, knowing that principle or the rule of the normal balance, malalaman natin kung paano natin gagawin ang journal entry. Pagdating dun sa kung ano yung i-debit natin, ano rin yung ating i-credit. So, depende sa transactions. Now, we will discuss about the yes, the transactions in a service business. So, dito tayo ngayon sa service business. But again, let us have some review of the three types of businesses according to activities. So, the first one, we have the service business. The second one, we have the merchandising business. And the third one, we have the manufacturing business. I know that you all are familiar with these types of business. So, yung service business, this is a type of business that offers professional skills advice and consultation. So, example ito yung mga barber shop, beauty parlor, repair shops, vulcanizing shops, mga banko, at pati yung mga partnership, no? yung like accounting and law firms. So, sila yung mga example ng service business. Merchandising business naman, this is a type of business that is engaged in buying and selling. So, they buy at wholesale and later sells the product at retail. So, they make profit by selling the merchandise or products at prices that are higher than their purchase cost. So, merchandising business nga. Kaya yung mga, mga nagtitindadyaan sa retail store, they are considered merchandising business. So, buy and sell. And example nga natin, yung mga bookstores, sari-sari stores, hardwares. So, marami pang iba. The third one is manufacturing business. This type of business buys raw materials and uses them in making a new product. Therefore, combining raw materials, labor, and expenses into a product for sale later on. So, merong uh, binibiling raw materials tapos isasalang sa processes or production of converting those raw materials into finished products. So, high example ito yung mga uh, paggawa ng sapatos, paggawa ng mga kotse, at marami pang ibang mga engaged doon sa manufacturing business. However, hindi lang dito naman nagtatapos ang types of business according to activities. Hindi lang naman isang business para sa service, isa para sa merchandising, at hindi, at hindi rin naman isa para sa manufacturing. May mga businesses na uh, involve lahat ng mga ito. Meaning, there are businesses that may be classified under more than one type of business. A bakery, for example, combines raw materials in making loaves of bread. So, under siya na manufacturing. Tapos, pag nagawa na, ibebenta na ito. So, merchandising na. And then, and caters customers' orders in, all, in small coffee table, servings of ensemada and hot coffee. This is an example of a service business ng isang bakery. Yung mga job order, mga iba naman, nagpapagawa ng cake, kasama yun sa service. So, the nature of a service business, first, it provides a needed service for a fee. Yun nga. 
service. At syempre, babayaran ka doon sa servisyo niya. They have no physical products sold to clients. Walang produktong uh, ibinebenta kasi nga yung ating professional work, yung ating ibinebenta. So, there is no physical product. Facilitate the work of clients and in return are paid. So, example nito yung halimbawa, may na nag-advertise sa Facebook na yung mga gustong magpakuha ng tin card. No? Sila na yung gagawa nun para sa sa'yo. Babayaran na lang. Yung iba naman is bookkeeping work. Halimbawa, ba? Ipinapagawa nila yung yung services na ginagawa ng bookkeeper sa iba. Tapos, babayaran na lang nila yung gumagawa nun. At yung iba, yung pagpaparehistro ng kanyang negosyo, ganun din. Uh, may ibang magpoproseso nun, tapos binabayaran na lang ng may-ari ng business. Includes salons or barbershops, loan with services, car repairs, medical centers, and services of professionals like lawyers and doctors. Revenue of a service business is usually realized once the service has been substantially completed. So, kapag tapos na yung pinapagawa sa'yo, mabayaran ka na. Aside from the minor supplies, it does not maintain high level of inventory compared to merchandising and manufacturing business. So, yung mga supplies na or yung inventory lang nila ay para lang doon sa kanilang usual na magagamit like yung mga office supplies pero hindi sila nagmaintain or largely hindi sila nagmaintain ng maramihan ng mga produkto na pambenta rin. In a relatively small service business, all transactions are on cash payments. So normally, uh, itong mga service business na ito, yung iba naman, maliit na business lang, so cash basis yan. Pero meron din naman iba na kapag may client na, may regular client na, pwede na yung credit extensions. Sales are collected immediately while most expenses are paid outright in the form of cash or checks. So, ganun din. Babayad ka rin ng mm, cash outrightly o kaya check-in sa mga expenses mo. The typical financial transactions recorded for a service company include collecting a deposit from the customer, providing the service, and receiving payment. So, yung iba ay nag uh, muna ng down payment bago masimulan yung service. Then, kapag ka natapos na, saka na sila babayaran ng full payment. Now, in our lesson for this week, we will be discussing about the, the first step in the accounting cycle of a service business. Yung transactions or events. And hanggang journal entries for this week. Let's take the first step. The transactions and or events. Identification and measurement of external transactions and internal events. At this stage, the documents used by the business are analyzed whether it has financial impact or effect. Financial impact or effect. Recall the rule that only financial transactions are recorded and that the amount can be measured. Ang sinasabi ko before, nire-record lang natin yung mamimissure natin financially. These two conditions must exist in order that a particular transaction is recognized or recorded. As defined, financial transactions are those activities that change the value of an asset, liability, or an equity. Mayroon kasing mga transactions na hindi naman talaga financial in nature. So, examples of financial transactions. Receipt of cash from a client as advance payment to repair a computer. Advance payment. So, nagbayad muna si customer. In this case, asset will increase. At the same time, the advances from client liability will also increase. The advances from client is a liability because the business has the obligation to render future service to the client. 
Remember, nagbayad na si client dito, kaya may kailangan kang gawin na serbisyo kay client. Yun yung obligasyon mo sa kanya. The other example is payment of electric bill as a financial transaction. This will decrease the cash or the asset and reduce the income of the business at the same time. Bakit reduce the income? Kasi nagbayad tayo ng utilities expenses. Yan yung electric bill. Examples naman ng non-financial transactions. Hiring and termination of employees. Bakit ito itinuturing na non-financial transactions? Hiring pa lang naman kasi. Wala pang pinag-uusapang pera dyan. Although, on, on the process of hiring, sa interview, pinag-uusapan na dyan kung magkano sa sweldo yun ng tao. But, yung, yung very act of interview and or the process of hiring, wala ka pang binabayarang empleyado dyan. Hinahire mo pa lang siya. Recognition from the government as most outstanding business at saka yung death of owner. So, yung mga yan ay examples ng non-financial transactions. Ngayon, kung yung empleyado na in-hire mo, sabihin natin after one month, binayaran mo na ng sweldo niya, doon napapasok yung tinatawag na financial transactions. In a typical service business, the following are the business documents used. Unang-una, official receipt or cash receipt. This document is used when the business receives money or a check. An official receipt or cash receipt is a document that acknowledges that money or a check have been received. Alam natin tong OR na tinatawag. Diba? Kapag bumili tayo sa mga tindahan, sa mga grocery, sa hardware, o kung saan pa mga establishment, kapag tayo ay nagbayo sa kanila, binibigyan tayo ng official receipt. At nalaman natin sa mga napag-aralan natin mga naunang week, ang business documents, kagaya ng OR, ano ang makikita dapat dito? Yung name ng business, yung kanyang tax identification number, at saka syempre yung kung vatable yung kanyang product or hindi. Nakalagay dapat doon yan. Pangalawa, charge invoice or sales invoice. A charge invoice is a document used when a service has been rendered but a client will be billed only after a certain number of days from the date of service. Often, a company will issue a statement of account to a customer with the charge or sales invoice attached. So, example, laundry business. A customer may bail of the services of the business. However, that customer and the owner of the business had a prior agreement that all services availed by the customer will be paid only after 30 days. In this case, a church invoice is issued on the day the client availed of the services. Ibig lamang sabihin ito, sa araw na nag, uh, ginawa mo yung services sa client, hindi ka niya agad babayaran. For example, depends sa agreement nyo, So after 15 days, saka kita babayaran. Or after 30 days, saka lang kita babayaran. Yun yung agreement nila. So, ikaw, ang gagawin mo, magbibigay ka ng charge invoice or sales invoice. Para after 30 days, ayan, bayaran ka niya. Number three, check or cash voucher. The check voucher is a document used when a check is issued to pay a certain supplier or vendor. For example, in a laundry business, For the payment of monthly electricity bills, the business may pay air, cash, or check. But the company must prepare a cash or check voucher to support this payment. This document will serve as a record of payment and at the same time as proof that payment has been made by the company. Ito ay katunayan na ikaw ay nag-issue ng check or nagbayad. Now, uh, journalizing is the second step in the accounting cycle. So, yung una nga ay yung i-determine natin yung transactions natin. Pangalawa ay ang journal entries. Last week, we have discussed already about the rules of debit and credit at nag-illustrate uh, na tayo ng ilang scenario or transactions at ginawa natin ng journal entries. 
So, let's recall, with the use of specialized journals, such as those for sales, purchases, cash receipts, and cash disbursements, and the general journal, transactions and events are entered into the accounting records. These are called the books of original entry. Debits and credits are an integral part of the journalizing process. In accounting, debits or credits are abbreviated as DR and CR, respectively. When to debit and when to credit. An increase in an asset account is called a debit and an increase in a liability or equity account is called credit. Likewise, if we decrease an asset account, we credit that account. On the other side of the equation, if we decrease a liability or equity account, we debit those accounts. So, the rules on debits and credits. Ito na yung pinaka-summary. The name of the account to be debited is always listed first. The debit account is listed on the first line with the amount in the left side of the register. The credit account is listed on the second line and is usually indented. The credited amount is recorded on the right side of the register. So, ibig lang sabihin, no, yung debit at credit na sinasabi natin o terminologies ay basically left and right. Yun lang naman yun. Indented si right. The total amount of debit should always equal the total amount of credit. That's why it is called accounting is an art of recording, summarizing. Let us take the case of Sean Kenny Merck, a computer technician. Sean decided to open his computer repair shop on February 14, 2019, naming it SKM Computer Repairs. Sean knows that business transactions should be separated from personal finances. Thus, he decided to invest 2 million in this business. He deposited the amount with Maya Bank. So, the entry for this transaction is cash. Debit mo yung cash for 2 million. And then, credit Merck Capital 2 million. Siyempre, pagka ginawa natin yan sa journal or sa general journal, ilagay natin yung date kung kailan naganap ang transaction. Of course, the explanation for the transaction. To record the initial investment of owner Sean Kenny Merck. Notice that we have debited cash, an asset account, and credited Merck Capital, an equity account. February 15, 2019, Sean purchased one computer unit from FFB Comp. MFB Computer Store to be used for the business. He issued check number 001 amounting to 25,000 pesos. Ang entry? Okay, February 15, 2019, debit natin ang office equipment kasi computer unit yun. Magkano? 25,000. And then credit cash, 25,000 kasi binili natin siya ng cash. Gamit ang cheque. Explanation to record purchase of one computer unit. Notice that the debit to office equipment increased the asset account and credit to cash decreased the asset account. Number three transaction, February 16, 2019. Sean hired Jenny Kelly, an experienced secretary. Entry. Meron ba? Wala. No entry. This is not a financial transaction, but it is an administrative matter. So, wala pa kasing involved na pera dyan. Now, February 17, 2019. Repaired the computer of Jean and collected 10,000 pesos. Ang date is February 17, 2019. Debit cash of 10,000 and credit service revenue of 10,000. Explanation to record receipt of cash from customer. Number 5 transaction. February 18, 2019 repaired Mike's computer. However, Mike will pay 15,000 
on March 18, 2019. Changed after one month pa. So, ano ang journal entry gagamitin natin dito? Nature nito, utang ni customer sa'yo. So, lagay natin date, February 18, 2019. Ang debit is accounts receivable of 15,000 and credit service revenue of 15,000. To record services rendered to a customer on account. February 19, 2019, Sean purchased office supplies from Yam Merchandise amounting to 5,000 on account. Sean will pay this on March 30, 2019. Ang date, February 19, 2019. And then, debit is supplies expense, 5,000. Credit, accounts payable, 5,000. Okay, class. Bakit ginamit ang supplies expense? Eh, kakabili pa lang nga nung office supplies. Di ba? Hindi naman sinabi na nagamit na. Bakit expense agad ang ginamit na account title? So, normally kung mga 5,000 pesos lang yan, ina-outright expense na yan. So, parang isang buwan yan, ubus na. Isa, dalawang buwan, ubus na. However, may principle dyan. Pwede kang gumamit ng Expense method kagaya nitong ginamit ngayon, supplies expense. Pwede ka rin naman gumamit ng asset method na nakalagay ay supplies, hindi expense. Ano mangyayari kung gagamitin mo dyan ang asset method or expense method? At the end of the month, i-adjust mo siya para ma-determine mo lang kung magkano lang talaga yung actual na nagamit sa uh, office supplies na binili mo at yung actual na hindi nagamit. So, mayroon kang adjustment na gagawin. However, for this amount, usually, tapos malaking kumpanya yan, supplies expense na yan. Hindi nila na, ano yan, hindi na nila ina-adjust yan. Lalo't 5,000 pesos lang naman ang amount. February 25, 2019, paid the salary of Jenny amounting to 4,000 pesos. Kung yung pagkakahire sa kanya, hindi pa siya maituturing na financial transaction, this time, sinuweldohan na siya. Kung kaya't may debit tayo na salary sa expense, 4,000, at magka-credit tayo naman ng 4,000. So, this time, recorded na ang transaction dahil pinasweldo na siya. Now, those are the, the typical no, transactions of a service business. Ito naman, makikita nyo ngayon ay journal entries in a corporate setup. Ibig sabihin, korporasyon ang negosyo, ang business. It is basically the same entries except for the transactions affecting capital or equity accounts. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Usually, yung mga accounts receivable, cash, accounts payable, notes receivable, furniture and fixtures, equipment, supplies. Same yan na ginagamit ng corporate setup. Nagkakaiba lang pagdating dun sa equity. Like, kagaya nito, merong share capital common, tapos meron din preferred stock. Yan ay under the equity ng corporation. So, basahin natin yung transaction. Sweeper Corporation was established to provide janitorial services to clients for a fee. The corporation issued 5,000 shares of common stock at 100 par value to shareholders. The issue price paid by the shareholders on January 3, 2019 equal the par value. The entry to record this transaction is so January 3, 2019, debit cash, 500,000, credit, Share Capital Common, 500,000. Paano nakuha yung 500,000? 100 pesos per value times mo lang dun sa 5,000 shares of common stock. Explanation, to record issuance of 5,000 shares at par value of 100 pesos. In the above example, if the issue price is 120 per share, what is the entry? And this is it. Debit, cash, 600,000. Credit, 
share capital, common, 500,000. And credit mo pa yung share premium common na 100. Ano yung share premium niyan? Above par yan. Kasi ang price lang talaga ng per share ay 100. Pero ibinenta mo siya ng 120. So, may 20 pesos na parang ano yun, additional paid in capital. Sa ibang term yung premium na yan ay additional paid in capital. So, ang explanation to record issuance of 5,000 shares at 120 per share. So, 100 par value. Compound journal entry. Ano naman tong compound journal entry na to? Alam na rin natin ito. Nabanggit na rin natin to sa mga naunang lessons natin. A simple journal entry has one account title on the debit side and one account title on the credit side. However, there are instances where in one particular transaction, two or more accounts on either the debit or credit side are affected. In this case, the business may prepare a compound journal entry. So, a compound journal entry combines one or two more accounts on the debit side or the credit side. Example, Ramon Laron decided to open a barbershop business in San Fernando City. He invested his old computer and $25,000 for this venture with a fair value of $15,000 to start the business. Ang journal entry natin dito, para ipakita natin yung compound journal entry, debit office equipment, $15,000, cash 25,000 so yan yun dalawang debit office equipment at saka yung cash credit mo yung Arlaron capital which is 40,000 so 15,000 plus 25,000 is equals to 40,000 explanation to record all computer and cash invested by the owner Notice that two account titles, office equipment and cash, were debited in the above entry. Another example. On September 7, 2016, Jose purchased various store equipment to be used in the business. The total cost of the equipment is $150,000. The supplier required Jose to pay 30% as down payment with the balance payable 30 days after. On journal entry, debit is... Store equipment, 150,000 pesos. At credit cash, 45,000. At credit accounts payable, 105,000. So, dalawa ang credit dito. Isang pagbabayad niya ng 45,000 na cash. At isa namang inirecord as putang niya, 105,000 pesos. Yun yung 30% na 150,000, yung 45,000. Explanation to record the old computer and cash invested by the owner. Notice here that you have two account titles, cash and accounts payable, affected on the credit side. And so, hanggang doon ang ating lesson for this week and now. We are in the questions of the week. The first question, what business document used when a service has been rendered but the client will be billed only after a certain number of days from the date of service? Letter A, charge invoice or sales invoice. Letter B, check or cash voucher. Letter C, official receipt or cash receipt. And letter E, all of these. Second question. What business document you used when a check is issued to pay a certain supplier or vendor? Letter A, charge invoice or sales invoice. Letter B, check or cash voucher. Letter C, official receipt or cash receipt. And letter D, all of the above. So, comment your answers on the comment section. So, class, see you again next week for our next lesson. Have a nice day.